and 11 years old, did your parents uh, separate it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was actually like when I was 12, 12. Yeah, going on 12, yeah, 11. They separated. But your dad, your dad still played a significant part in your life, you guys' lives, right? Still was there, still made sure you guys were doing what you had to do because you were young. Absolutely. He still was there. Uh, he still was a part of us and a part of the, uh, the family in, in every sense of the way. Um, it's just disagreements that they had. And for me, you know, I looked at it as, all right, um, I didn't see anything else different from it. I think mm -hmm. my brothers, um, they had a little bit there for them. But for me, I just, you know, I was just so focused and driven. And, and you know, I got to thank God for that because... I literally wanted to be somewhere and I wasn't going to let, you know, a separation and whatever the case may be stop me from, you know, my destiny. And I, and I truly believe that um, they are still going to be like, they were still a part of my life. Nothing is going to change like regardless. from the situation. We just living in two different places mm -hmm. and I get it. And I understand like adults things and I understood it, you know, at a younger age than I probably would have had liked to. <laughs> right. But at the same time, like, you know, I couldn't, you know, wallow or be stuck in that position or else I wouldn't have been able to get to the next. Right. And and, and since he was gone, was this a time because I seen, um, you know, reading your, uh, the notes that you grew up in a, a, in a trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a double-sided trailer, like, this is part of me being, you know, ignorant, like hearing like a black person being in a, I'm from the city. So this projects, right? Now you hear yeah. somebody, somebody black grown, grown up in a, uh, in a trailer. It's like, damn, that happens, you know what I mean? So how was that experience though for you, you know, at that time? You know? <sighs> that was, that was, um, you had a, you had a luxury trailer. It was two sided trailer. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was, a, that was a good life. I can say that. I, I say, um, it's like a project in a sense, but like out in the country, where you buy yourself 40 mm. acres and a trailer. And they're just wow. right there, almost like 40 acres and a mule, right? But instead right. of mules, we had horses. And it was about 30 of them suckers. <laughs> and wow. I tell you, it was like a constant, everyday uh, manual labor kind of thing and, right. and keeping up with them and um, going out there and, you know, being one with nature in the sense of, so it wasn't like other trailers out there, like a real trailer park. It was just that nah, land. It, it wasn't a trailer park. It was just more so land. You and then okay, it's probably like okay. a house beside us and a house across from us. And then they yeah. had like um, Red Bud Lane where you go up the street. And then they have like a couple of houses they just put out there. It's almost like you know, if you want land, you get land, right? And then they like take a trailer and you just drop it out there on top of that land. <laughs> <laughs> mm, that's okay. kind of so how it, was. it wasn't that bad you had the country life nah I did have the country like so like for me it, it's the best of both worlds man like I, I enjoyed like the freshness of being out there I enjoyed like the moment and crazy thing I was no bored moments because I was with my brothers so they made it um, what it was we always had some activity or something going on and right. I remember we had a station wagon so we was really like my mom piled us all up in the station wagon. Yeah. <laughs> we used yeah. to go to the events. Because at this time now she's doing everything. She's doing a lot by herself, raising you guys, you know, practically. Well, so like, what, like we was together did. when we was in the trailer, though. So my dad and my mom was still together when we was in the trailer. So that was like um, that on Highway 25 South. So that whole thing of growing up. And we, I remember we had to walk from the trailer all the way to the um, bus stop. That was probably like two or three football fields of walk every morning that we had to go there. And I remember that. And we just waiting there for the bus. Bus was circling around. It was, it was like bus 12. And just remembering all those things, um, we even had our yard was so big, it was almost like a football field. So I remember when it snowed, this was one of my memories. It was probably like, the snow was probably like, I don't know, somewhere probably like two feet of snow. In South Carolina? And South Carolina. Wow. <laughs> Back then. It was like, that was a two feet of snow. So I remember, like, me and my brothers, we saw that, and it was like, oh, yeah, it's time. So we all just got together, got a bunch of socks, and got, like, a big coats and everything, and bundled up, just went out there to the front yard, 
And yeah. we seen John Madden on TV and everything and how the boys used to play football in snow. Yeah. <laughs> so we got all our stuff and the football. We had an all-time quarterback, <laughs> two against mm. two. And we just went out there and got at each other <laughs> wow. in the snow. In that the snow in South Carolina. In South that, Carolina. That doesn't even sound right. Like snow, two feet of snow in South Carolina. Nah, okay, but so it was real. It was real. It was real. Um, you attended Greenwood High School. Mm -hmm. Started playing football in Greenwood? Yeah, so uh, attended Greenwood High School. Um, I was I started playing ball before that, but yeah, um, it just tr graduated to the high school level. Um, I was, what, 12th grade? I ended up, like I said, I didn't play baseball, so I was just playing um, football and running track primarily. Um, and so for me, that was like the, the things that I knew I was going to go in. And track was just something that helped me out uh, and develop my speed and develop um, my takeoffs and stuff for, and my win as well for um, football. Because I did the 400 and the 400 hurdles. And if anybody know anything about 400 hurdles, that's a horse trailer race. <laughs> That'll get it up out of you. So that was my endurance. And then, you know, I played uh, both sides of the ball. In high school, I played strong safety and I played wide receiver. So, um, and then kickoff, kickoff return, all those things. And I ended up um, being a recruit for Georgia, University of Georgia. But long story short, ended up going to Coast Carolina down with my brother. So that was. Was, a, you, was that with your older brother? Though? Your yeah, older that was brother? with my older brother, Mario. Uh, he was uh, one year older than me. That's the one I competed with all the time. All the time. All now, the time. At this time, you're going to high school. Did you, uh, was your mom still taking you in the station wagon? <laughs> no, <Nah, it> still... <laughs> no, nah, that station wagon, it kind of it kind of hit the ditch uh, back in the day. <laughs> kind of ran off the road into a ditch and we had some cracked eggs on us <laughs> kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. Station wagons in the ditch. But I want to ask why I asked about the station wagons because I read somewhere where your uh, second oldest brother, Orlando, said that your mom's was actually uh, like scraping pennies, like to, you know, to, was that true? Like it was that tough on her? It was this, and was this go during high school? Um, I probably was, cause I think he was going to college. I think he was going to college, you know, kind of A&T or whatever the case may be. And maybe that took place. I know she had a big old penny jar. That thing was huge. <laughs> and, that, and that was for the gas. So she was using that for gas. It was huge. For, I mean, so was that for the station wagon? Or was that for the new car? <laughs> it was. I don't know, cause cause station wagon. It was wrecked. So station wagon happened when I was probably like. I mean, we had that thing until I, up until I was like six or seven, maybe. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so, so it was gone that. by then. Okay. By the time then, like they traded in. I remember, like nineteen ninety five, she ended up getting the new the Chrysler. Mm. <laughs> it was like the van. Like that was a thing back then. Like a Chrysler van. Like the you soccer had mom that. van. There you go. Like we was in that <laughs> thing, piled up. Yeah. Remember, it like yesterday, but like um, I kind of think that was the case in a sense. Um, did that happen? And I and I kind of remember that. So I saw that. And for me, it just put me in a place where, yeah, um, I'm gonna get a scholarship. So I worked my tail off to do that. And so crazy that the scholarship, um, it was between me and another guy, a uh, bird at that time. And they thought I wasn't gonna make the SAT score. And so they gave it to him instead. Uh -huh. And so I ended up making the score. So I was SOL, as they say. And I sat uh -huh. down there and I looked and I was like, okay, well, shoot. Well, I got this school here. I got these other D2, D3 schools, but I looked at it like, man, like I went up there and I visited them. They was all full rides, but I feel more comfortable in a sense of placement. So I got to be somewhere where I feel like I can be able to thrive. Like, And so I just went down there with my brother at the beach and just like, like lived on his couch for a little bit and went to take classes over at or Georgetown Tech um, for a little bit and, and and worked at a mental health technician uh, at a um, at a hospital. So I did sure. that for a while. And because I seen how the whole setup, I wouldn't want nobody to pay for my school. So it was my, my fault and my reason um, that I was in this position, you know? Right, um, right. I, I, if I would have worked early on, and in school, instead of you know trying to catch back up my 11th and 12th grade year, 
Cause my ninth grade year, I had Fs and D. Like I was, I was, that was terrible. And so catching that back up and and trying to do it the right way for me, I think like that was my fault. So I didn't want my mom to come out of pocket or my dad in any kind of way um, to help me get into school. So that was my most trying moments for those two years. Um, and I broke through and got you know accepted in the Coast Carolina where my brother was played. And, you know, um, kind of made my way through through college that way. And, you know, sometimes she tried to help me. I was like, Josh, you sure? I was like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. Because I saw how she went through that struggle with my right, other brother. Right. So I didn't want to be that guy. And, and probably to this day, she didn't probably know that. But, like, that's not, you know, I took that upon myself. And I take full responsibility for it. And, and those are my actions. So that's why I wanted to prove to be, um, I had to go through that. Um, at Greenwood, Omonte Edwards and DJ Swerwinger went to that school too. Yeah, you yeah, cool they did. Them? Are you cool, cool with them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're still cool. So, I mean, they're from Greenwood. So anybody from that city and that, city, and that still state, tight with them. it's just like, you know, that's that's that bun that, you know, you may go off on another, you know, level in life, but you still bonded by where you come from. Um, I haven't talked to them in a while, but like those guys are still, whenever something happens in Greenwood, they, you know, they usually be there for. 2006, you won the high school state championship in South Carolina. Named all state football player and was selected to participate in the North South All Star game. Yeah. Yeah, that now was. You, uh, now it's starting as you starting to feel yourself a little something, right? How's that feel? I did, man. It started to feel really good. I, I was like, so that time we had Mohawks and I and I started the whole Mohawk thing and I had one that looked like Mr. T. So they called me Mr. T because I had a gold chain and then I had the Mohawk and I played five positions. So <laughs> it was just one of those things that like like stuck with us. But I had the mindset of a Greenwood Warrior back then. That they, that that was one of the things that that really took off for me and I really wanted to 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 get out of the situation that we was in. So I really put everything and heart and soul into the game. And and I kind of got, you know, I got rewarded for it in the end with um, with scholarship. But at the end of the day, like, it got rescinded. So I went right. through another path. And, another path. Right. And, it, and it just, you know, it made me stronger, though. It really did. It made me a whole lot stronger than what it was for me. So... You played, oh, when you said you played the basketball, baseball track, and you played that in high school. There weren't any offers for any other sport, though, while you were in high school? No, there was no other offers for any other sport. And, and, and for me, it was just, you know, when I played those sp sports, it was like ninth through 10th grade. 11th grade, it was, um, it was just basketball. Um, I did a little baseball AU, but nothing serious. Football, of course, and then um, um, uh, I did a little bit of track. So it was just like I cut out swimming. <laughs> yeah, because it would overlap. So it, all this stuff was overlapping. So Overlapping, right? So basically I made sure that I stay in sport so I wouldn't be caught in the street <laughs> because there was a lot of gang stuff that was going on and, and hit buzzers four four. It was just a lot. And I just yeah, didn't how did want you, to be how, how did you guys deal with that? You know, five brothers. I know, man. Like Gang, gang shit going on. Listen, the hood, like, listen. You know, how, <laughs> so, hey, we started some of it <laughs> in a sense. I didn't even say that, but like it was just the fact that, you know, it was what we grew up in. It was it was a cultural environment. You know, right. if you wanted to be cool, you want to be hip, that's kind of what it was in a sense. Like some of them stayed away from it from a sense of my brother brother played basketball. Um, my other two brothers that was older than me, Chez and Mario, like they played football. And that was kind of like, you know what I looked up to and I saw my baby brother Philip, he was kind of like coming up. So he didn't really get into that type of stuff. He was just, you know, different in his own way. Me and him was pretty different. We didn't get touched in that light. But my other brothers, all the two older brothers, they was into that a little bit. But at the same time, you know, they had their guys. They had their friends right. and people that, you know, was in that stuff. And so for me growing up, seeing that I kind of saw it from an angle of where to step and where not to step, you know? And that just made everything else, you know, um, my path a lot straighter, if I can say. And I just really got into sport and, 
And I just immersed myself in that. 